Welcome everybody to a new episode of Flower Circus Talks. Today a very special day, a very special guest. An honor that he is uh, joining the show today. It's a man who's born on a flower convention. He's a certified flower designer, a member of the American Academy of Floriculture, the American Institute of Floral Designers, the Professional Floral Communicators International and the National Speakers Association. Uh, he was honored with the Society of American Florist Tommy Bright Lifetime Achievement Award of Excellence in Communication, Instruction and Marketing for the Flower Industry in 2010. And in 2011, he was honored with the Crystal Rose Award, denoting Jay as the living legend in the flower industry. Uh, he's the CEO of ubloom.com and the presenter of Live in Bloom. Let's uh, have a warm welcome for Jay. Good morning. Um, he's also a magician. He can hide himself. Oh, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> that's part of the circus theme. Yeah, I mean uh, that's why I've got my uh, my assistant here. Awesome, as well. <laughs> awesome. That's great. So, how are you? I'm great, and thank you. Hey, thank you for letting me check another box on the things I wanted to do. I've always wanted to be on Flower Circus. I love what you guys do, and I think it's wonderful. Yeah. So thanks for, let, for having me, letting me come on board today. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a great honor. I mean, a man who has been called a living legend in the floral industry. That's not a lot of people uh, who can say that. That's a lot of stuff. Is I, when I read my bio, sometimes I'm kind of like, wow, wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Okay. I even found some some great pictures of you uh, yeah. when you were young. <laughs> There you go. I know that's how it all started, John. That my parents used those. Those were in the newspaper every night. There was a Jay says ad, and I would say Jay says buy your mother flowers, or Jay says buy your grandma flowers, or you know. So we we had those in, and it made school a little miserable, but it was a okay. really fun start. So that was good. Yeah. Yeah, it, it it looks really great, and then even on the later age, you were still you were hiding the flowers, but you were still with flowers. <laughs> True. Yeah. I, so I did those until I was 16. Can you imagine? They wow. did those with me until I was 16 years old. I got beat up in school a lot. <laughs> yeah. Was it that bad? Um, you got... uh, yeah. Unfortunate. I mean, you know, character building, but yeah, no kids, kids back then made fun of kids. I mean, you know, and there was always, you know, that, issue that oh that's the kid who's in the newspaper every night with the flowers you know yeah. so eh, yeah. yeah you know i mean kids are mean but you know they're, they're truthful too yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's good it's good yeah yeah so we've already cooking oil in good afternoon oh, hey, good to see you yeah juan david saying rock star ah, jd yeah jd i will try not to talk too much <laughs> we will try not to talk too much next time JD, you can join as well with a hi hat. <laughs> yes exactly he can yeah so jay can you tell a bit more i already introduced what you did and that's only a small part actually but for the people uh maybe in europe that don't know you yet can you tell a little bit more about yourself so i think it's interesting i was born into a fourth generation family business um my, my parents ran a flower shop and we kept it in the same family for over 126 years. So um, I'm a flower lifer. I was born at a flower convention, which is a crazy story, but it's very true. My mom and dad ran the Nebraska Flora Society for 50 years and my mother was pregnant at one of the events and she went into labor and they had and I was and there was a snowstorm and I was delivered at the hotel. <laughs> so I was actually, I was born into the flower industry. And so I grew up with, you know, great folks like Willie Armellini and the Kitayama brothers and all these people. We all went to, we all went to conventions together and yeah. we grew up together. And there's Willie. Yeah, yeah, Willie. Willie. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're flower lifers and we have spent our, our entire life here doing this. And I think that that's, that's part of it. So I ran a flower shop for 34 years. Then I branched out and I started to do education in the flower industry in the US. And I worked with many different sponsors over the years and they would take me around to wholesale houses. And I have done 
presentations in every single state in the in the United States, um, Mexico, Canada, uh, the UK. Um, you know, so so I've been around the world doing those. And my favorite part about it is just sharing my passion for flowers with people. I think that that's the the most important part. And I love what I do. And the people in the flower industry are family to me. I mean, when I see Willie Armelini, it's like he's my big brother. You know, yeah. when I see Carrie Marshall Foster, it's like she's my beautiful little sister. And, you know, those people, we've become, Mark friends, Mark Mark has been to my house, you know, and we we had, we did the, the Dutch coffee and the treats and stuff. I mean, <laughs> people in the industry are family. And and Bill Schaefer, ah, there you go, Bill Schaefer yeah. at the Philadelphia <laughs> Flower Show killed it at the Philadelphia Flower Show. One of the most incredible flower installations I've ever seen, and and that's that's what's so interesting about this is we're all working our way, weaving our way, creating our own magic, and I think that that's something that is extremely important. JD creates magic with the deli floor. You know, Carrie creates magic with the florist magazine. You know, every single person is creating their own magic. And and I think that sometimes we worry too much about being like someone else when we could be the very best me that we can be. And when yeah. we do that, we really deliver. I, nobody nobody is, is, is John. John is the very best John in the world. And you need to be John. And so I try and be Jay. I, there was someone one time who said to me, hey, look out for me. I'm the next Jay Schwanke. And I was like, well, I wish you the utmost success, but I really want you to be yourself. Yeah. I don't want you to be me. I want you to be who you are because you're important. That's yeah. you create your own magic. So yeah. Yeah. a copy is not and never so, as good as an original. Right, right. And so um, that led to my career with creating You Bloom, where we realized that suddenly those shows we were doing were shrinking to little tiny numbers. Yeah. So we created online web broadcasting in 2006. So we have produced a television show for the web every week since 2006. My guys are amazing. They do a wonderful job. Um, they've been with me for the entire time and they just do a killer job with that. And so YouBloom.com has a membership, but it also has a free side. So yeah. we can we can do both. And it was always leading towards my goal to create a national television show. It was really important for me to bring flowers to the American public and tell the stories that we are able to tell. And that's that's the important this, part. This and is so, something, yeah, this is something we can achieve in Holland as well. I mean, uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be me or it doesn't matter who it is but there needs to be a television show about flowers. And it was interesting. They came to me and they said, so this is a show about gardening. And I said, not at all. This is a show about cut flowers, arranging cut flowers. Sure, you can cut them from the garden, but you might also buy them at the grocery store, buy them at the farmer's market, get them from a professional florist. You, There are so many opportunities to get flowers and people are intimidated. And so I think one of the things that we were really excited about was being able to make them more comfortable. My goal is to make people comfortable with flowers. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they'll buy that bouquet of flowers at the grocery store and then bring it home and just stick it in the vase with, you know, they don't arrange it. They don't do anything with it because they're terrified. And, yeah. and it's kind of like, you know, you, you and I were talking about cooking ahead of time. But I mean, you know, w the first time I bought ahi tuna, I wasn't going to make it into a rose. I just wanted to make sure it was good, you know? And so people feel that way about it. And if we can help them be comfortable, I think that that's extremely important. Yeah. So. Yeah, that, that's a much her thing about people going to into a florist shop and saying, um, I can't handle a plant. I can't do this. I can't do that. But if they get more confident with flowers and plants, they can do much more. We just need to add that confidence. And I think, you know, we, we, we've, we've worried so much about selling them flowers, we forgot to make them comfortable. Yeah. And so Life in Bloom, the people at public television here in the U.S. are calling me the Bob Ross of flowers. And Bob Ross is the guy who did all the painting, you know, with the big afro and everything. You got you know, a different haircut than him, yeah. <laughs> and 
the show is very calming. It calms people down. And it's amazing to me that currently hundreds of people every week are writing into me, emails, mailing, sending presents to me me and thanking me for helping them through the pandemic by calming them down and making them more comfortable with flowers. And I think that that's, that's an incredible thing. That's my backyard. Those are just flowers out of my backyard. And, yeah, okay. and people need to feel comfortable with being able to do that. And um, I'm, I'm extremely thankful um, that, that the people reach out to me and that we're connecting with them because yeah. Now I'm on a different side. For so many years, I was talking to the professional florist, and now I'm talking to the general public. And what's so interesting about that is I think as as professional florists, we can become um, jaded a little bit about what we do, you know, that it's difficult, that there's challenges, that we maybe complain a little bit that we you know that when we're busy and when things are short or times are tough it's it's very hard for us. Yeah. When the general public thinks about flowers, they smile from ear to ear. They are excited. I mean, when you give someone flowers, we have we have pedal it forward coming up here in the US in October and we're going to do that with Society of American Florists, but when you give someone flowers, suddenly they're like, "Oh, the flowers are for me and and I love flowers and I'm, I'm just get to take these I get to take them home oh, oh my gosh that yeah. feeling is the thing that maybe as our industry we forgot we forgot what it was like you know I've never had the experience John of having the flower truck pull up in front of my house to deliver me flowers because I'm the flower guy so I don't know what that feels like but the general public does and when that happens, they're, they're giddy, they're excited. And so we need to tap into that to help them understand how that works. So, yeah. It's a totally different way talking to the consumers than talking to the florist. And, and that's what I actually noticed with Flower Circus as well. I've visited so many uh, trade shows as well. And, and there were companies or growers or breeders, and they were next to their product like, yeah, it's my roses. Yeah. And people were getting crazy. Even the florists were like, wow, this is beautiful. People in Eastern Europe, they, they pose with the flowers and all the girls are, are pretty and, and almost hugging all the flowers. They were right. so happy. And there was such a big contrast with the man in the stand who was like, yeah, that's my job. And, and the people yeah. were so happy. And that's why I thought we need to have more fun. And that's why... I came up with the circus. Okay, we, flowers is already beautiful, but we need to to show the fun as well. Absolutely, I think it's true. There's fun, Mark. Hi, Mark. Mark is there as well. <laughs> I have no Mark. I have no cookie for my coffee. I need my cookie. Yeah, next time we will bring it for sure. I will next make sure you bring it. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So I think. I think, you know, that that goal of, of getting it in, and we went to public television as opposed to, we were offered two reality shows. Um, one where I would flip flower shops and then they would try and make it, make something go wrong, burn down the flower shop or freeze the pipes or something. And, and then another one was about weddings and that the bride would choose the wedding that she wanted and then they would try and with, and that's the, that's the, that's the nature of a reality show is they want to create drama they want to create that and and our industry doesn't need that i believe that our industry needs to be peaceful our new industry needs to be calm our entire we're in our second season right now so we are in um 86 million homes i i know that's a huge number and it's kind of hard for people to wrap their head around so if you take 25 cities just pick 25 random cities in the united states yeah in a week we're, we have 280,000 people watch our show. Maybe that's a little bit easier to understand. So 280,000 people in those 25 cities will watch our show this week. God. And our show is on 52 weeks a year. And we're in our second season. And so our third season is coming. Um, what happens with public television is it's different than commercial television in that we have our wonderful underwriters who underwrite our show. And they pay for the production of the show and for us to distribute it through public television because public television is free. 
So anyone can get public television. So that's, it's not like Big Bang Theory. I certainly wish it was like Big Bang Theory and I was making a million dollars a show. That would be really wonderful, John. And then we could have this in Tahiti. We would go to Tahiti and we would sit there and, and have Flower Circus. But what happens is my distribution, my, the, the, the underwriters pay for the distribution of the show so that yeah. all of the stations in the U.S. can show the show for free. Um, many shows like American Masterpiece, Masterpiece Theater, or, um, America, or uh, Antiques Roadshow, they have to pay to, to show those. They don't have to pay to show Life in Bloom. Okay. And our second season was all about um, health and wellness. And so it was perfect timing for the pandemic. Yeah. Because all the health and wellness studies that were done by Dr. Havlin Jones, um, that were funded by... Uh, the, the Society of American Florists, all of that information now, we are pushing out to the American public so that they know that having flowers in their homes makes you feel better, feel less depressed. You know, there's less arguments, all those great things. So I think that, that you know, it's, it's important that we're spreading that message. I, I, for years, I've been talking about that. And I think one of the things that I think is so interesting is it took a global pandemic for yeah. our industry to talk about the health and wellness benefits of flowers. And we've known about it for decades. Shame I mean, on us. We yeah. should be telling those people. I mean, people know in the presence of flowers, we feel better. We feel yeah. better. I those, mean, then, those flowers make me feel better. Yeah. Just by being there. That's really, really important. And so teaching people about that is, is super important. So, yeah. It's unbelievable that we forgot that actually. I mean, there are so many studies. Uh, NASA was already NASA was already having a study almost 30 years ago about uh, the, the the plants how how they influence us and the environment. Absolutely, clean the air. Yeah, yeah. and 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 uh, you're talking about you're being happy with flowers. There's a big study about women being uh, happier for three days when they receive flowers. You know, that's that. There's your marriage counseling, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's much cheaper as well. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it is. It's true. Um, we have a show coming up in season see, season three about plants in your home and which plants are the best ones. Which ones will clean the toxins out? Um, talking to your plants, the music you should play for plants. Um, they don't like hard rock. They don't like acid rock music. They like more calming music. So um, I probably harmonica music. Maybe yeah, Willie can play harmonica. Maybe Willie can help us out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He needs, we need a soundtrack yeah. for the plants. That's good. Yeah. We've got a question from uh, Walter Jonkind uh, talking about marriage. Uh, he just yes. got married on Friday, last Friday. So uh, congratulations, uh, Walter. Congratulations. Uh, just, uh, yeah. What's your opinion about so, the Netflix the reality Netflix show? Reality. Okay, so um, I loved watching it. I, I mean, I still like I like to watch that. I don't want to be part of it. I don't want to. I don't want to be a judge. I don't. I don't like to judge because I don't feel like judging is. I, I feel that judging can go astray. Let's just say that. So, yeah. um, I here's my biggest. Here was my biggest concern when they offered me the reality shows and I turned them down. I think our industry, we are extremely passionate and we are extremely passionate, creative people. And we throw ourselves into everything we do. And we can, we can look crazy pretty quickly. Yeah. And that's not our own fault because we're passionate and we're creative. So I think using us as a foil to make it, you know, I don't know. I, you know, I'm not a big fan. I watched it. I enjoyed it. I thought it did a lot more for um, the garden center industry than anything. I think it, I did. I, I thought it was misleading that it was called the big flower fight. It was the big greenhouse garden fight. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. And so um, I wanted to see more flowers. I would have been. I, I loved. I loved the mobiles and I loved the fashion because it really did incorporate floral into that. So I feel like that and. I understand there are more reality shows coming that 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 spun off more reality shows. So um, I'm happy. I have some friends who have contacted me and they're going to be involved in it. 
I think that's great. Yeah. I will not be involved in it. I will continue to do Jay Schwanke's Life in Bloom and be the Bob Ross <laughs> of Flower. Yeah. That's what I will do. I will keep people calm with them. But it's a great question. I mean, I, I think any time our industry can get on television and we can get people to see that, it's exciting. Yeah. Um, you know, it's going to, someone said, very, very wise man once said, I don't care what they say about me as long as they're talking about me. And I think that there's some truth to that. As long as they're talking about the flower industry, it can be helpful. So, yeah, I think that's, that's, that's very important. There are so many ways to promote flowers. And, and right. I mean, uh, what we are making during Flower Circus is not art. I mean, it's commercial work. People can make it quite easily, uh, especially if you're a florist. Uh, and others are promoting it, making a, a piece with, I don't know, uh, like art. And that's, that's also beautiful, but that's not the way we go. Like, right. you, you are choosing for your own program and not something like Netflix. You have to stay close to yourself. I think that's very important. Right. This, this is what I teach them to do. It's just, it's 12 zinnias and it's seven, four, one. And when I teach seven, four, one to people, they feel successful. And yeah. so that's my thing. And that's the magic that I make. I, I, you know, and, and when I, yesterday, when we were, or no, the ninth, uh, two days ago when we were watching, so I'm not going to say her name right, Ger Gerta? Gerta? With the deli floor thing. Gerta? Yeah, yeah, was was her name? Gerta. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I fascinated. I was like this, watching her the whole time. I'm fascinated to watch other people make the magic that they make because yeah. each person does their own thing. And, and the thing things she made were gorgeous and beautiful and so different than what I make. Yeah. So, you know, and there's inspiration in there. There's little pieces and parts of inspiration that we pull away from that. So I think it's interesting. I think I love, I love how big our industry is and how different it is. So. It, it really is. And, and what you see with flower circus, we're working now with eight different designers and everybody has his own style and his own <laughs> tricks. So right. we, we come back to uh, the same place after a year and then we have a different designer and it's a totally different show telling different yeah. things, maybe sometimes even using the same flowers, but we make something totally different and it's really nice. What I adored, my favorite part of the whole show was when you showed the videos of the deli floor chrysanthemums and I could see what that whole stem looked like and how many flowers were on it. I was just wild about that. I was just like, oh, that's so cool. I just, yeah. I, you know, because ultimately I think I am a flower geek. I mean, I'm the guy who goes to all of the shows that we go to and my mouth just drops open. I mean, you know, when I get to see the flowers and then when you get to see what people make with them, you know, it's it's unbelievable. Um, Bill Schaefer. Bill and Bill and his and his wife made the most incredible display at the Philadelphia Flower yeah. Show, and I watched people stand there with their mouths hanging open, just looking at those hanging installations of texture and color and amazing flowers. And to me, that was why they won because they. They won the audience over. When you walked up to that, you felt like you were on the, the Italian coast and you were looking at those gorgeous flowers. It was amazing. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, and, and, and then you could walk around the corner and you, there's these little tiny miniature things that were this big of a whole like a little bayou with manatees in the water and everything. But so many different things come together and so and watching the general public thousands and thousands and thousands of people going in there to see that and when when we when we go to Amsterdam and you you know you don't go to somebody's house unless you bring flowers that's you know yeah. and I like that my my Dutch friends say oh you're the Americans you bring wine and help us drink half of it I think that's funny <laughs> yeah <laughs> we need to bring flowers we need to bring flowers with us when we come because we're flower people yeah. and 
the entire culture that goes along with, you know, bringing flowers to someone's home. When you go to see someone, you bring flowers. You know, when you celebrate, you bring flowers. We don't bring flowers enough, so yeah. we need to bring it more. And and that is that's part of what happens with um, Jay Schwanke's life in Bloom is we cook with flowers, we make cocktails with flowers, we craft, we make projects, we arrange flowers, we have a featured flower, we go to a flower farm and teach you where it was grown. So in so JD, I have thir only twenty six minutes and I have to tell them ten things. Yeah. <laughs> so I got to go fast, man, and I got to talk a lot. So yeah, that's the truth. But I mean, you know, we need we need to get those ten things in there. So, Peter, congratulations, Peter, on your new job. Yeah, it looks I'm really great. Peter. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, Peter, what a talent! What a talent! Yeah, yeah. potatoes and vases. I love that. Actually, yeah. uh, you were so talking about the videos. I qu can quickly uh, show oh. them to the people uh, what we uh, what we were talking about. Just, it's uh, magic. That's yeah. magic. Yeah. It, Is that autumn red or? No, it's really mm. bright, bright red. It's it's really nice one. Yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, so the end, you know, that's the other thing is, so, so you're asking me what other things I'm up to. I am up to Jay's bouquets. So I'm working with Sunshine Bouquet and we are mm -hmm. creating bouquets for the mass market. Um, and one of the things that I wanted to do when I did that was I wanted to make sure that they lasted a long time and that they gave great um, enjoyment to the person who purchased them. Yeah. So they are chrysanthemum and carnation heavy. Every single one has carnations and chrysanthemums in them because I feel that that's so important. Those are two flowers that have such an amazing depth for us and that they're so incredibly colorful, long lasting, amazing. I show some hypnos carnations now and people say, is that a peony? And I'm like, no, it's a carnation. Yeah. And they're like, no, 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 really. It's a peony, right? No, it's a carnation. So I think that that's, that's part of the amazing, um, you know, thing that we can bring. Because, yeah. you know, so many people told me, and I will, I will tell you this, people were like, well, Jay, you're going to have to do this and you're going to have to do that. And the people at Sunshine Bouquet were so amazing. Laura and her team there um, brought me in. And they, and they just filled the room with all their flowers and they said, make your bouquets. And then they had me work with a person who was able to itemize and put them together, figure out what was good. And they, gave, they did such a great job. And so I think sometimes we need to be let go so that we can do what we know how to do best. You know, I, I would never dream of telling Willie Armellini how to play his harmonica. Don't know how? I've seen him. I can I could make a lot of noise on one, but I'm not <laughs> going to tell him how to do that. Yeah, because he knows how to do that. He knows how to do it well. You know, and 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 I'm not I'm not going to tell Bill Schaefer how to create his next his next art piece because he knows how to do that. And what's so cool is that when we get to go to these shows, we get to see those color palettes. It's like it's like being an artist and digging through all the paints and getting all the paints together so that you can say, hey, you know what? I want to use that chrysanthemum and this carnation and this rose and this thing, and they all go together in here and they look amazing. And I think that that's, that's a really important part about what we do is that, that, that each one of us is telling a story. That's the other cool thing about, about Jay's bouquet is just as a side note for you, um, they, they each have a story that goes with them. Sorry, there we go. And so then there's a little story in a picture, and it's just a story about why that bouquet came to be. Yeah. And oh, so crazy. we're creating, yeah, so, so on each, on each uh, bouquet, there's a QR code, and that'll take you to, the, to a video that shows you what to do with that arrangement and tells you the story behind it. Because I felt like there's backstory, backstory yeah. for our, because, because the general public loves a story. We since yeah. we were little tiny kids, 
We sat there at story time and we listened to people read books to us and tell us amazing, marvelous stories about Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny and all those wonderful things. And, and so telling those stories is extremely important. Now, especially with so, the pandemic, <laughs> that people are more interested in flowers and plants again, it's the time to tell those stories. I mean, this is already Absolutely. what you're telling for many years. I'm doing the same with Flower Circus, giving the, the flowers the tools to tell about it. Uh, I think it was last month or three weeks ago, I had uh, Leon Kluge from South Africa. He is brilliant. On Facebook, he is going through the, the Southern Cape in South Africa, and, and telling about all the plants that are growing there. It's it's fantastic to watch. Leon Kluge, I will put his name on uh, up into the screen. It's fantastic to watch. I mean, also with such a passion talking about those plants, where they come from, uh, how they live, things like that. So that's really something uh, to have a look out for uh, as well. It's so true, because I think that we learned that when we created our documentary series for the California flower farmers. It, it, it wasn't so much about that, that, I mean, it's interesting because California is one of the, you know, seven Mediterranean climates in the United, in the world. And they, yeah. and, and there are so many different growing regions there, but each and every farmer has their own unique story about how they do business. And we have been able to weave those stories into our public television. Vision show because side of Santa Barbara, how someone grows protea in Fallbrook, how someone grows tulips in Arcata, all of those those stories are unique and different and unusual. I might so you asked about my goals. We did those. I want to get my crew to uh, to Amsterdam because I want I want people to experience that. I want to go to Medellin and see them grow chrysanthemums because we used to grow chrysanthemums as little kids and in our greenhouses and 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 I want to go watch them disbud and see all that stuff because it's very personal um our our we had we had seven acres of greenhouses so when I was a little kid we we grew roses carnations chrysanthemums yeah. gladiolas delphiniums all the things that we needed for a flower shop because we weren't shipping from anywhere yeah. so there's there's personalized stories behind those that can help us teach people more about flowers I would love to follow a flower too from, you know, Colombia to a table in the US. I would love people to know how that works. I wanna follow that flower all the way. I think that would be so cool. And, and, and let people know more about that because once you know the story, you fall in love all over again. That's, that's the best part. So. And what better gift than giving a bunch of flowers and you can tell a whole story about it as well when you give the bunch of flowers. This flower from South yes. Africa, this is from there. And that's, that's great. It's so true. It's so true. So I'm supposed to tell you that the Dahlia oh, yeah. is... It's, it's, uh, what I see in... in uh, Go ahead. Playing with colors. So, yeah, I'm a... So, you know, I'm really fortunate. Leatrice Eisman from the Pantone Institute um, is she's the executive director. She's a really good friend of mine. I'm a, I'm a huge fan. And she, I read all of her books about color and color is an extremely important way for us to communicate. Um, we have a show about color in the second season and that's from that where we talk about the color horoscopes that go along with each individual color. So, um, if you, if you like red, perhaps your, um, you know, you're oh, and we make, so that's a drink that I make, right? It's the <laughs> rainbow shots, which is very fun because you pour all the liquor into one, into one container and then you pour it out and it makes all the, the shots, each shot is a different color. It's amazing. Wow. <laughs> but my friend at Disney taught me how to do that. But anyway, so um, yeah, it's crazy. They're, you know, it's, it's, it was fun. It's fun. But you know, if you if you like red, you're you know you're you're the the lifeblood. You're you're the heat in a relationship. If you like orange, you embrace change. If you like blue, you're traditional and dependable. So each person has their own specific color horoscope that goes along with it. And I think it's so important to be able to to talk to people about color. I think color is 
underappreciated and we don't think about it enough when we're creating the arrangement. It's the very first thing I think about in every single arrangement I make. Okay. I think about the way the colors are going to play with one another. And, and so um, I think that that's, that's important. I mean, you know, and there's times, you know, when you have like the zinnias I showed you or the dahlias that are back there, I've used them all because I, because sometimes it's just all about putting as many flowers in as you possibly can. So there's that. Yeah. Yeah. Like you said two days ago, uh, a bouquet can't be big enough. <laughs> it's true. You know, I think that that's true. I mean, sure. You know, if you want a small bouquet, that's great. Or if you have two flowers in the garden, it's okay. Our first show in uh, Life in Bloom taught people how to make an arrangement with one flower. And I think that that takes away a little bit of the intimidation. I think that that's a good thing. So. Yeah, and then also uh, little children who want to buy uh, flowers. They start with one flower, but once you help them in a nice way, tell them about it, they will come back. Yeah, exactly, exactly, so true. So, so true. actually, we're talking a lot about uh, the uh, the Live in Bloom uh, shows. Uh, after the interview is done, uh, there will be an, uh, an episode. Uh, it's in the comments, so you can see the, the pilot. Yeah. So that's uh, that's great. That's a, uh, yeah, so you, you know that. but I also love your creativity. Creativity. I mean, you made a rose out of a cabbage. <laughs> you know, that's an old trick that my friend Richard Seabolt taught me. And you simply take you you take a cabbage and you cut halfway through it three times. So you make an X and one more down the middle. You drop it into a bucket for thirty minutes. Take it out of the bucket and it's a rose. It's crazy. I mean, there's just those little, I, I think, you know, I'm the tip and trick guy because um, when uh, many, many years ago, I created a set of books called A Thousand and One Ideas for the Flower Industry and A Thousand More Ideas. And I, and that kind of put me on the map as the guy who knew how to do a trick or two with yeah. flowers. And so when we, when we created our first book, which is called Fun with Flowers, um, we included little tips inside it. And so, so inside each book, book page, we'd have a little tip that would tell them, hey, you can do this. And so um, we and we actually won the Living Now Book Award for this book, which was really nice. It was our first collaboration and it was wonderful. And so then they said, you should do a book with all tips. And I was like, okay. So Kelly and I wrote this one and it's 365 tips about how to arrange flowers. And this one won the Independent Book Award for the United States, and it was—it's the first time ever that a cut flower book has won. So we're very—we were very pleased with that. So um, I think that knowing what those tips and tricks are and being able to share them with people, it makes you look like a professional. You know how proud you are when you get when you do something that you you learned a little thing about, you know, and you're like, yeah. oh, I learned that little trick, and it made me look like a pro. And don't I look great? And I think that that's really important. I think that you know. It, it would be, it, it's a really good, a good opportunity to empower people. That's yeah. my biggest thing about the books, I think, is that yeah, the books, the show, the, everything I do is about empowering people, making somebody feel more worthwhile, making somebody feel good about themselves. Yeah. And, and that's really important. Yeah, to make them more confident with the flowers as well. That's what we, sometimes we invite people onto the stage and then of course they are afraid, but just be creative. Right. I said, but isn't that fun? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I love that. We, we do a, we do a charity function here in Grand Rapids called the flower power challenge. And we invite celebrities from the city and we give them five minutes to make a flower arrangement. We give them all the flowers, all the tools, we give them a little tutorial and then they make it. And then the audience cheers for the best person. And then the best person wins money for their favorite charity. And, I love that because they they are intimidated at first, but at the same time, it's exciting. We did it at a fun and sun convention one time too with um, Kate Penn and Michael Labou and all these people who are very famous in our industry, but are not flower arrangers. And it was really fun to see them arrange flowers. Yeah. And I, I think that that's the cool part is we, we need to do that. We need to take take that and, and do something fun with it. Uh, that, that's really the most important thing, I think, to have fun with it. I mean, um, I'm wearing this costume because the flowers right. are fun. It's all about right. emotions. I love your big hat. 
I think it's awesome. That's what that's what this is all about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, like, I don't know. Why, why do you have your hair like Tintin? And I'm like, because I do. You know, it gets your attention. It's a way to get your attention. It's a way to make it fun. And I think that that's super important. Yeah. So, and yeah. in fun, people remember things when they're having fun as well. They remember Absolutely. it better than, than just when. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So and, and and you're having fun with with the dog as well sometimes I can see <laughs> you dress them up. It's <laughs> true. So yeah, the girls, um, Eleanor and Ladybird, the first ladies of Ubloom, um, we are crazy about them, and they are uh, they they're they're just amazing. I think you know one of the one of the nicest things that um, the pandemic did for me. I've been home more than I've ever been home in the past 25 years. So I have. I have experienced spring, summer, and now we're heading into fall in my own home. I get to see my dogs every day. Um, one of my dogs meditates with me every day. I've trained her to meditate with me, and she's so good at it. I love that. And But it gave me time to spend with them because I was always saying to myself, I wish I could spend more time with my dogs. I wish I could spend more time with Kelly. I wish I could spend more time in the garden. And this was the gift of time. If, if there's anything that I can say positive about it, I will tell you that it's the gift of time. And it's allowed us to reflect. I've, I've become closer to people via social media. I call my friends and I talk to them and we talk maybe for an hour because we have time. Yeah. And, and I think that that's, that is a huge blessing, a huge blessing. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, we have to make the best out of it uh, now right. that we're on travel. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's and, enjoy this period. And as well. you invented this. I mean, how wonderful is this that you, you and, you're, we are we are talking around the world with all of these people who are our friends. How amazing is that? Yeah. That technology is just as incredible as a flower. It's just incredible. Yeah, it's it's really. Uh, Betsy is saying uh, the gift of time. Agree, one hundred percent. Absolutely, Betsy. Absolutely. I mean, uh, it gave me so much time. I had a whole stack of papers with with. So many ideas, but I never, right. it just right. piled up and, and I went away again, put some new Check papers. Them off. <laughs> it's so true. It really is true. That's, it's, it's so nice. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that, that's, yeah, it's unbelievable. And you need to use that time. I don't, of course, right. uh, we're right. getting back into the, the red race again. I mean, when the pandemic is over, we'll, when the pandemic is over, I'm still going to make time to bake bread. I learned how to bake bread, and I love to bake bread, and I'm I'm going to continue to do that. I think that it takes time, and it you know it takes it's a good opportunity for us to. I've learned to cook. I'm getting better at cooking. I like it. Yeah, I've seen so, some uh, some beautiful creations as well. So <laughs> the lavender cheesecake. Yeah, right. I know. So yeah, it's good. Lavender cheesecake. Yeah. So. We the, the interesting thing about the TV show too is we do host so so um, on the network on PBS the show is blocked geographically so we host the show for free on UBloom and anyone can watch the show anywhere in the world so anyone can go there uh, go to ubloom.com life backslash life in bloom and they can watch all twenty six of the shows that we have so far we are. Um, we're engaging right now with um, with PBS and Australian television and also Netflix and airline TV because they are showing an interest in the show. So I think it could uh, we could be doing some wonderful things with it. Uh, season three is finished, um, and season three will come out in April of 2021. We work about a year ahead of time with the show. Um, again, we have some great shows coming up. We have one about sunflowers. We have one that's all about chrysanthemums and filled to the brim with deli floor varieties. I'm <laughs> so excited about that. Um, just a little plug for you, JD, because I'm crazy about you. So there's that. But, um, you know, so so I think that that's important. We, um, I would be remiss. We have amazing underwriters. The Albertsons Companies, which is all of the Albertsons grocery store banners, are yeah. one of our underwriters for that, as well as Sunshine Bouquet. Um, for season three, uh, Cal Flowers is also one of our underwriters for season three, and yeah. we are actively seeking a few others because we, because of the pandemic, we had a few people who were unclear about what their you know abilities were going to be. So we're still looking for for some underwriters. So we're working on that every day, and and that's important. Our goal is to get five seasons. 
because five seasons will allow us to have 52 shows, so we will remain on the air all the time in a permanent spot. Oh, and cool. that's our goal for the flower industry, because we realize that when we sell flowers, at no matter where we sell flowers, we are supporting the growers, the wholesalers, the retailers, everyone who sells flowers, the, the sale of any single flower helps the rest of the flower people in the world. That, that high tide raises all boats. And we wanna make sure that we're just continually reminding people about their ability to include flowers in their lives. So that's what we do. Yeah, and, and, and that's why the pandemic helped us uh, in, in a way that, uh, yeah, the renewed interest and now we need to push it out. Like you said, people are also, the, the broadcast uh, uh, companies are having more interest because they know what people want to see. It's true. There's Carrie Marshall Foster. Yeah. Carrie Marshall Foster, you are simply the best. <laughs> you are the best. Yeah, there's something with Tina Turner there. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Cute Tina Turner. There she is. She, Carrie did the most amazing thing. We were at um, Society of Floristry and we were having these events. And at the end of every event, Carrie would come out and give a little speech after we had, and it was so great because I was there performing with them and it was so much fun. But um, she would come out and say, and you all are simply the best. And then they would cue the Tina Turner music and everyone would stand up and dance. <laughs> and so whenever there's something special for Carrie Marshall Foster, I have to get out the Tina Turner stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so because it's the best, simply the best. You are very welcome. I love you. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's great. It's good. What I want to know, how can you keep up with all those shows and, and normally all the, the traveling? How, how do you manage this? You know, okay, so I think the simple explanation is that I have never worked a day in my life because I love what I do so much. Um, Every single day I get a touch of flower. Every single day I get to be with my friends. Every new adventure, every time you step on a plane, every time you walk out your front door, you're creating an opportunity where you're gonna share your passion for what you do. And I hear a lot about people who don't like what they do, that, yeah. that, they're, that it's miserable or they hate it. And I, I feel I feel heartbroken for them. I feel so badly for them because there's, there's nothing I love more than flowers. So every single day is a joy. So I, I guess I don't feel driven by the fact that, oh, I have to go make the flowers, you know, the, the donut commercial, time to make the donuts, time to make the flowers. That's the best part. And, and when I get to see my friends and, you know, I mean, I think that that's probably the hardest part about this pandemic is that, you know, I want to see Willie Armelini. I want to see Kerry Marshall Foster. I want to see you, John. I want to see Mark Frank. I want to see, I want to see Betsy. I want to see Melanie. I want to see every single one of those people. I want to see David. I want to see David and his cute kids. David has the cutest kids. I want to see all those people and I can't. So this is the next best thing. Mm -hmm. And we want to be able to do that. And we want to be able to bring that joy of flowers. So, you know, I'm happy when I have a full schedule. I like that. I, li I like when I look down and I know that there's things to do. Um, and it doesn't seem like a chore. It, I, I have never thought, I think maybe if someday I think, oh God, I don't want to go. Maybe I'll stay home. Maybe that'll be my indicator to tell me to stay home. But mm -hmm. um, I'm a Pisces. So um, I'm March 7th is my birthday and I love change. Pisces love change. We embrace change. We wait for change. We hope for change. We know that change is coming. Mm -hmm. And so a new thing is a, is a great thing to me. It doesn't frighten me. So yeah, it's just, yeah. It's, and, and I think, you know, turn, turn the thing upside down and look at it from a different direction and see how you can change it. I think that that's pretty good advice. Um, I'm, I, I'm, I'm just really fortunate, John. I'm, I'm truly blessed. I'm blessed with this list of all these friends on the side of the page, with the flowers in the vase back there, with a wonderful home. With And I will tell you, when you have a life that you can spend 
with someone you adore and that is the best person in the whole world. I am so lucky that I have Kelly as a partner mm -hmm. and he is there every single step of the way, one step ahead of me and always out there in the back of the room so that I know that I'm okay. And I'm crazy about him. So I get to spend, I get to do absolutely everything I love and I get to spend it with someone that I adore. My life is perfect. It's yeah. perfect. So yeah. yeah, I can't complain. Yeah. So yeah. I wish that for everyone. I want everyone to have that in their lives. A little bit of flowers, a little bit of love and a little bit of passion. So yeah. yeah. And, uh, then the world will look a lot different, I think, as well. <laughs> right, right, right. Because right? that's what we do. I mean, you know, that's, we all have the opportunity to change the world. Every single one of us has that opportunity to change the world. Yeah. And each one of us has that opportunity to create the magic. And so that's what we need to do. We need to go out, harness that magic, and unleash it on the world and make it better. Make it better. Yeah. So, yeah. It's great. I mean, I, I, I think much, these are... <laughs> <laughs> and some dogs. You're absolutely right, William Armelini. And, and some dogs. Yeah. You have to have dogs. Yes, you have to have dogs. And, yes. and probably some homemade whiskey as well, will you or not? <laughs> I I want a bowl from Willie. Willie makes these amazing lathed bowls. Yeah. yeah. He, he's such an artist. He's so he's so incredibly talented. Wow, I'm amazed. All the time. Yeah, I mean, the things he can do, he's making the balls, he's playing the guitar, he's playing the harmonica. It's unbelievable. Right? Right? <laughs> yeah. I, I was in I was in Miami and I and I was going, I was coming home from Miami. I was at Sunshine for some reason and I walked to the airport and here he was sitting in the corner. And we sat down and we sat together and talked for an hour. And it's like the big brother he's like a big brother to me it was just like oh my god here we get to talk and we're friends and we're from different parts of the country and there he is and we just visited and talked and you know solved the problems of the world yeah. <laughs> <laughs> perhaps i don't know yeah. but you know it's good. good when you have those when you have those happenstances that happen it's good yeah uh bill is saying hey willie you should write and play the theme song for john Totally up for that. <laughs> Good idea. Yeah. So, uh, Willie, uh, the, the stage is yours. <laughs> awesome. I can't wait to hear it. Yeah. So that's good. Actually, uh, I was looking for a song for our entrance when we when we do a live show. So uh, with the pandemic uh, going on still uh, probably a couple of months, you will have some time, uh, Willie. So uh, it doesn't have to be finished next week. <laughs> he's, he's working on it right now. Yeah, so, uh, it will be done next week because he doesn't. Yeah, right. He just does it. You know, he'll yeah. just do it. So yeah, that's great. Great. yeah, John, thank you. I mean, yeah. I, I truly appreciate the opportunity. Um, Flower Circus is an amazing, amazing opportunity for all of us to get together and to to learn more about one another and you have offered that to us and not only that but you also show us amazing flower design and i'm so thankful to your artists who bring us new flowers and and the event that you held the other day for those of you who haven't watched it go back and watch the chrysanthemum day uh, event because it was stunning it was stunning and it was so helpful and it was so informative and you're a wonderful host and i appreciate it i just i i love and everybody who's out there every single one of you that are in the comments on that on this side, yeah. right over here, over yeah. there, over there. Keep doing what you're doing because you are making it better for all of us. Every single one of you are creating magic. And I see you every day. I see you on Facebook every day. And I see what you are doing. And I love seeing what you're doing because you're all making a difference. I, and I really want to thank you for your positive energy and, and uh, reaching out to all the people there as well uh, in the comments and, and saying so many nice words about Flower Circus, but also all the people there in the comments. I mean, you're... We don't do this alone, John. We are no. not alone. We are no. never alone. Every single one of us are in this together. We are yeah. all in it. So yeah, we're, we're all doing it together. Yeah, luckily we are. And uh, we can make this, uh, this industry and this life, we, together we can make it great. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, my friend. Thank okay. You. Thank you. I hope to see you soon in real life. Uh, I will bring the cookies. <laughs> okay, good. Good, good. Thank you. I hope so, too.
Yeah, thank you everybody for watching. Hope to see you soon again. Uh, next Friday, we have another Flower Circus Talks. And the 2nd of October, we will have a new uh, live show where a new designer, Tiffany Van Lente, will show uh, her floral skills. So I'm uh, re really looking forward to it. So uh, stay safe and uh, hope to see you all soon again. Take care.